Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Here on the boardwalk and behind me is Boardwalk Hall. If you know, that's home to the largest pipe organ in the world, the Mid Merloche. But guess what? We're not here to see that organ today. We're here to see the other organ in the room. You may not know there's actually two instruments. There's a Kimball organ in the Adrian Phillips Theater. Nathan Bryson is head of the Historic Organ Restoration Committee, uh, and he's here to tell us all about the Kimball organ. People probably best know this building for the Midmer Lash organ in the main arena. However, what a lot of people don't know is there's actually a second pipe organ in the building, which in any other building would be a landmark instrument. But because it is overshadowed by its very large neighbor, um, we, we like to call it the painting next to the Mona Lisa. It often gets overlooked. It's really a, a magnificent instrument built by the W.W. Kimball Company out of Chicago. The instrument was completed in 1930. Uh, it's not one of Kimball's largest instruments, but it's an incredibly versatile instrument. It's four manuals, 55 ranks. The designer of both instruments was a state senator. His name was Senator Emerson Richards, and he wanted this organ not just to be used for silent films, but to be used for a very broad uh, repertoire, lots of different uses for uh, an incredibly versatile room. Today we use this organ for everything from religious services, graduations, dinners, conferences. It's an incredibly versatile instrument uh, and rather than calling it a theater organ, you would best describe it as a symphonic organ. Uh, and as you'll hear a little bit later, it can do just about everything. There are complete diapason choruses in both chambers. Uh, it has the tibia, as one would expect, and the vox humanas and the canuras, everything you would expect from a theater organ. Uh, but its strong, strongest suit, I believe, is its strings. Just an incredible, lush ensemble of strings. Unlike a typical theater organ, this organ has 19 stops that are on unit action and 23 stops that are on pitman action. Typically on a theater organ, you would find all of the pipes standing on unit chests, whereby there's a magnet for each and every pipe. Uh, you can make all of the different ranks on a theater organ uh, play at various pitches at 16, 8, 4, 2. All sorts of, all sorts of magic can happen with that. Uh, which, is, which is typical uh, and, and certainly not something they wanted to leave out of this instrument, but they wanted it to do more than just theatrical music. There are, there's a whole principal chorus, a diapason chorus, a uh, major and minor chorus in both divisions uh, that stand on, on your typical Pittman chest that you would find in more of a church or a concert hall instrument. Nick Myers is here on staff at the Boardwalk Hall and he is here to tell us all about this instrument and uh, the fascinating array of colors we can find behind the walls in the chamber. Here at the console, I am with Nick Myers. Nick, it's good to be back with you again here in Atlantic City. Yeah. Nick works here on the uh, Historic Restoration Committee, so mm -hmm. you have been taking care of this instrument as well as the big one in the next room, but yes. we're here to talk about this one today. The first thing I noticed about this Kimball, I've, I've been listening to Dylan play it, and it's got those amazing Kimball strings and those those big dark reeds, but it's just got, it's very colorful, but it's obviously, it looks like a theater organ, and yes. there's a lot of theater sounds in this. Yes. So tell me, and I notice it's laid out uh, not with the, your standard divisions, but with theater divisions, accompaniment, solo, bombard. For the most part, yeah. yes. So um, just describe this organ to me. Tell me how we find our way around it. So yeah, it's actually a, kind of a quirky instrument. Um, I love this organ. It's one of my favorite organs in the existence of an, any <laughs> organ. Um, but uh, there's some quirks and things about it because there are unit chests and uh, Pittman chests in this organ as well. So things don't borrow quite like what you think, so you have to do some creative coupling. Okay. Um, but overall, it's basically a, a theater organ style console. Okay, and how many ranks are there total in this instrument? 55. 55, all yeah. right. So it's a decent sized instrument, too. Yes, uh, and she's on higher pressure. She's on 10 and 15, so okay. with, the, with the 25 inch uh, tubas, two of them. Oh, all right. Well, that's kind of what we'd expect from an organ of this period. Yes. Um, so uh, where should we start? Well, I think in for, since this is a Kimball, we should start with the strings, oh, I think so. if anything. Um, so we have a ton of them. Um, so we have here, uh, let's start right in the, in the warmest strings, and you can actually hear a lot of Wanamaker in this. This is the cello. 
And it has a Celeste. And then we have a violin. And that has a Celeste. And that violin actually goes down to 16 as well, so. And that's available in the pedal, okay? Then you also have two pairs of what they call orchestral strings, and these are two ranks that play uh, together at all times. And then there's a second set. Bright and edgy there. Yes, kind of videos, <laughs> yeah, basically. The, then we have um, probably my favorite outside of the cellos is the violas. And that's a, with a celeste as well. Now this organ is divided between two chambers on either side of the stage, yes. and all of those strings came from sort of alternating sides, so they're divided between, or how are things divided in the chambers? Basically, so we have a main chamber, which is, and this is a very generic statement, but for the most part, the, the main side, which is the left side, has a lot of the accompanimental stops okay. and the color stops. Then you have the right side, which is the solo side, which is mostly bigger stops, your big tubas, your big diapase and chorus. For the most part. Okay. Um, and then there's one more set of strings we didn't talk about. There's what are called muted strings. This is only available on the accompaniment, and they're obviously very, very quiet. So yeah, so mm -hmm. just to kind of give you a little taste, you can get the, the Kimball sounds just by strings that's, together. That's a unique sound. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the reason why I love this organ so much is because despite its size, mm -hmm. it has so much lush string tone. It's almost, uh, it almost stands up to the diapason yeah. chorus. Okay. Well, how about then next, do we go to the diapason chorus? Almost, oh. actually. We do a hybrid. We have two okay. gems. We have a gems horn and a gems horn celeste. Oh, so right. if you want to consider that a string or diapason, we can do both. So this is uh, a, the gems horn. and the Gemshorn Celeste. And what's interesting is the senator loved his Gemshorns. <laughs> he loved them. So what, what's interesting is on the Mittenberlache um, pipe organ, which we're, we're very much restoring right now, we're deep in it, um, there are tons of gems horns, and they're all throughout the organ. Hmm. So it's kind of the tying, the tying rank that puts everything together. I would say that almost sounds like a small diapason. So yeah. it's definitely stepping in that direction. Yes. Uh, away from the strings. Okay, then yeah. where do we go? And then I guess we can move to our diapason chorus. So yeah. there is a, because this is not quite a theater organ, um, you can kind of sense that he definitely was putting more of a foot in the diapason chorus side. So there's two main diapason choruses. We have a major diapason chorus, and I guess you could call it a minor diapason chorus, and then tons of colors within those. So I guess we'll start with the major di uh, uh, let's start with the smaller diapason okay. chorus first. So first we have on the accompaniment an English diapason. This is also, this is the viola diapason on the right. Thank you. 
And then we have a muted diapason on the main. So we've got three eight-foot minor diapasons mm -hmm. there. They're all just straight ranks, though. Those aren't borrowed up to the rest of the chorus like you would on a theater organ. No. Okay. So then do we go to four-foot matching stuff yeah. to go on so, top of them? So we can do, yeah. we can do that. Um, we have a uh, four-foot octave, which is on the main. With the pairing eight-foot, putting those together. We have a two foot to go on top of that by itself. All that together. There's also a two and two thirds in there. And I'm gonna say before we even get to that, this is yeah. already sounds like a, a major diapason on a lot of organs. Oh, completely. I mean, but it's still it's our first minor. Uh, it's a big. It's the biggest of the small ones, but it's it's already pretty big. Yeah, and it's on ten inches of wind. Okay. So I mean, it's it's. Wow. If you would think of a theater organ pressure, yeah, uh, the minor version of that. And once we get into the major diapason chorus, okay. you'll see how <laughs> big of a difference that is. I can't wait. So yeah, so there's also a two and two thirds, which sounds like this. Very fluty, yeah. and then put that in, putting that together, and then there's a mixture. She's not super happy today. We were having a little bit of an issue with the chest this morning, but um, okay. it's very quiet, kind of timid. Um, but all of that together. The course itself is already pretty bright, so the mm -hmm. mixture just adds an extra little sparkle. Exactly, and if you did, um, if you didn't put the mixture on and you do the super coupler, yeah, as you would probably do with a Kimball most of the time, you use the couplers to your advantage. Okay. Um, so that's the uh, the main diapason chorus. On the other side of the. Um, the chambers mm -hmm. on the on the solo side, you have the big, what's called the okay. major diapason chorus. Most of this is on 15 inches, um, but you can see here why they call it <laughs> major. So we have the major diapason over here, and this, by the way, is only available on the Bombard manual, which is the fourth manual. Oh. So you have to, if you want to use your diapason chorus, your main diapason chorus, you have to couple it. Interesting. Which is kind of strange, but okay. you know, you make do. So here's the major diapason, eight foot. See what you mean? Yes. <laughs> That's and then you sound. have a major octave, which and those together. Wow. And then there's a two foot. Okay. And then all that together. That's a big sound. That's yeah, funny. and they thought that was big. There is a seven rank mixture that oh. tops all of that. <laughs> it's a very surprising sound yes. for a Kimball of this period. Not only to be to have that big diapason, but to have a, a mixture that bright on top. It, yeah, it, that That's intrigued me too. I thought that was so cool that they they were that forward thing. I guess the, the majority the senator of the may senator. have been pushing, yeah, towards yeah, the, the that bright classical. It. Okay, which it did. You know, out of the the main diapason chorus, mm -hmm. we have the diaphone, which is borrowed up yeah. into the manuals, which is also available if you want that. That's also in fifteen inches. Mm. Um, this is also a, a quite a large sound. And obviously, you have that in the pedal as well. Okay. Just that one rank fills the room. Yeah, indeed. Um, that's actually, I, I should also say, just if people are wondering, there are no totally independent ranks in the pedal, as you okay. might imagine. So every, almost everything in here that's available at 16 in the 16. manuals is just available in the pedal. Gotcha. Um, 
So now we can move on to the flutes. Mm -hmm. um, this, the organ doesn't actually have a ton of flute tone. Okay. Um, we have, uh, I think, one of the, the prettiest sets of flutes is a f there's the, the flute celeste that's only, mm -hmm. again, available on the top manual. So we have the, the flauto dolce. And it's celeste. And then we have what's called the flute overt. Um, this is another Senator Richards. He loved his flute overt. So there's lots of them in the in the Mid-Merlash as well. Uh, this is more of a diapason, I think, than a flute oh. in, the, in its sound. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, interesting. It's a neat sound. Is that a metal or wood flute? Uh, I believe it is metal. Okay, yeah, makes some sense. Um, then we have uh, a clarabella, which is you'd maybe call it the biggest flute of the organ. And that's also available at quite a few pitches. More expected sound there for mm -hmm. Clarabella. Okay. Uh, and then we have the, the stopped flute, which is the Borden available. It's a 97 or 103 <laughs> pipes. It's crazy. And you can make the Nazard with it. Sounds like a church organ. Right, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have, so the, what's you know, every theater organ has is the t the tibia clauso, mm -hmm. which is a big flute. That's it without the trim. Of course. Now the fun thing about this organ um, is this. Uh, ha we we have the Kimball style uh, tremulant on the tibia. But Kimball tremulants are a little bit different than what you might hear for a Wurlitzer. Mm -hmm. So because the, the organ was provided with a couple extra tremulant tabs, <laughs> we uh, provided an alternative tremulant that's a little bit faster and deeper. So if you did, uh, if you want to hear the difference between the two, this is the Kimball. It's a yeah. little bit more typically theatrical. It's our theater sound, yeah. Okay. Um, and we have, you know, just to give that as an option for you. So, but that, so it's only available uh, at 16, 8, and 4. Huh. And that's it. Huh. So there's, so you can see that the senator was like, here you go. You can have a little, <laughs> a little tibia in there. We'll just, we'll deal with it. Okay. And that's it. There's no mutations. There's nothing. All right. Um, but it still has that sound. Uh, and then finally, which is, uh, I think, my favorite of the flutes, uh, besides the Celeste, because mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for Celestes, um, is the mellophone. And this is something I think you've had on a video previously. I think we've had, we have seen a wooden mellophone stop, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, on a Kimball uh, yes. in, uh, in, uh, in Milwaukee. Yes. There's a mellophone stop on the organ there at Church of the Jesu. Yes. Uh, so, so this is another example? This is, yes. So this is, well, here's, here's the sound of it. This is a big, giant wooden flute. What's interesting about that is, I don't know if the intention is to be sort of a pseudo reed or what a sound of a mellophone, which is another, it's similar to a, a, uh, a French horn, but not exactly the same. Um, but I think that makes more of a convincing French horn than the actual <laughs> French horn does. So this is the, uh, we're gonna jump ahead for a second. This is the solo French horn. Mm -hmm. This is the mellophone. As you can kind of see. Yeah, they yeah. both have their qualities there. That it's nice to have the option then, I guess, between one or the other. Yeah, or it's a, um for a big dark sound with a little bit of a little bit of a flip on it that gives you that brass sound. Yeah, and it's it was funny because. Dylan, who uh, played just recently, he uh, he and I were talking about that. That putting them together mm -hmm. is also a really useful sound. Oh, yeah. 
Um, okay. So yeah, there's the flutes of this organ. All right. And that that mellophone, I can at least here, I can even though it does sound very very much like a French one, I can tell mm -hmm. that it's a flute. Like it's still got a lot of those flute qualities. Yes. Um, while still coming across as a very powerful dark sound. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I actually kind of wish someday that somebody would make two mellophones and you could celeste them together. Oh. I'm sure that would make a <laughs> luxurious sound. But again, me and celeste. Yeah. Um, and then, so if we move on to color reeds, mm -hmm. color reeds, there is a plethora <laughs> on this organ. Like and what's so interesting is I worked on the Wanamaker organ for a long time and the orchestral division in that organ is so famous mm -hmm. because it's all just yeah. big Kimball reeds. And that's the exact same stuff <laughs> we have here. Um, so if we start with uh, the uh, Fagato, which is available at 16, 8, and 4, um, you can hear some of that sound. <laughs> Nice. Uh, then we have a clarinet. And an English horn. A little tremulo in action yeah, for you. Lovely. Then you have a saxophone. Interesting. That's way darker than some of the saxophones, or it has more dark mm -hmm. uh, color to it. So it definitely has that saxophone brightness, but it definitely has a lot of body, too. Yeah. Uh, then we have the French horn, which we mm -hmm. did earlier. And we have an orchestral oboe. Bladdy sound. Yeah, I like it. And then we have a trumpet, which is available also at 16. We'll play it at 8 foot now. Very nice. Yeah, it's a cool sound. Uh, then we have two fanciful reeds, or fanciful reeds. We have a canura. And you can put that with the tibia. <laughs> Then we have the fabulous Vox Humana. And for fun, you might as well do this with the strings. strings almost overdo the Vox, though. They There's do. so yeah, much brightness that the Vox is just kind of sits in there and doesn't... It's in there. She's <laughs> saying hello, but yeah, the strings definitely take over. Okay. Uh, and then we make it to the big reeds, mm. the toys, or I guess you would say the big uh, party horns. So there's, I, I like to consider the two big, um, I guess they could be considered uh, color reeds, but I, we think of them as, as, as solo reeds. So First of all, this is the brass trumpet from uh, the solo division. Okay. This is actually um, kind of fun. This is a, a, the first brass stop that Kimball put in. Really? Um, and it was made by Gottfried. Um, there's mm. actually a, a lot of brass in the big organ, <laughs> um, as you might imagine. But this is a, um, this is a brass trumpet in the, in the solo. It's nice. not too pungent. No, but it's bright and mm -hmm. cutting. I like it. Yeah. And then there is the, talk about bright and cutting, mm. the post horn. Yeah, it sounds more like a brass sort of trumpet that I'm expecting on the theater organ. Exactly. There's your, um, it you know, can be a nice little blat noise <laughs> that you have for a little brass hit. Uh, and then you have the two big tubas. So this, um, 
There's two of them. Mm -hmm. One of the, they're both available at 16 and one of them at 32 in the pedal. Mm. Um, you have the smaller tuba, which is uh, the 32 foot, um, and this, the, both of these are on 25 inches. Yes. Um, the smaller tuba, both of them being very round. This is the smaller of the two. And it has um, uh, the 16 foot with it. And what's so cool about this rank is that it's almost like if you close the shades, it's almost an oboe. Very lush. It's, it's nice. It's a loud oboe, but it's yes. you're right. It could work. Yeah. Well, for this organ, I yeah. should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you have the big tuba, which is the tuba mirabilis, which is also available at 16 in the pedal. Yeah, it's a great sound. Yeah, I love that tuba. <laughs> I love that tuba, and it has a clarion to go with it. So if you have all the tubas going at once, you have pretty much a division in and of itself. And we should not shy away from doing the 32. No, no, no. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> She's a full length wooden uh, Bombard okay. and man, it packs a punch. And that's the only 32 in the organ. Okay. Um, there is a, a diaphone resultant, mm -hmm. actually, that does shake the room if you need to. And then there is an acoustic, which is from. But that comes from the uh, the tibia. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this does have a lot of theater organ still in it, and that means we have a lot of percussion stops here as well. Yes. So Let's I'm going to try to. We'll see how many of them are happy today. Okay. Um, we have a harp, which also in the, is available an octave above as a celesta, and a xylophone. A glockenspiel. We do have chimes available over here. Hmm. And then we have a vibra harp, hmm. which the vibraphone is not vibraing not today, but you can. Yeah, it's a pretty sound. Uh, then you have a lot of uh, drums, and not all of them mm -hmm. are working just yet. But um, for the ones that are, you have a wood block, castanet, tambourine, tom tom. Then you have a bass drum loud, is what they call it. Boom. Uh, a cymbal. And then a bass drum soft, which is very soft. A uh, timpani roll, Chinese gong, triangle. And then there's two spoons okay. for a few other things. Um, you have another triangle down here. Uh, a bird call, a second bird call. Of course. Seems like that one has more oil in it today. <laughs> you have a sleigh bell. And then you have a, so we have a, uh, we were able to add a cymbal roll, oh. which we have like at the Wanamaker. Very nice. Yeah, it's kind of a cool effect you can use. <laughs> and more uh, leaning toward the Theodore. And you do have second touch on um, Two of the manuals and the yes. pedal? Yes, so the two bottom manuals have second touch, and then the pedal okay. has second touch so as have, well. You can add those theatrical effects if necessary. Yes.
this Kimball is, is pretty remarkable, even though it's not the largest instrument that Kimball built, uh, it's still in its original home. And we have 99% uh, of, of this instrument is still original. Uh, the console was restored a number of years ago by Ken Chrome, um, but all of the pipework, all of the Winchester original, through the generosity of the American Theater Organ Society, we have been able to re-leather all of the main wind chests in the organ uh, and a number of the offset chests. We still have a few more to go, but we kind of selected those intentionally so that we could get to the easiest offset chest at a later date. Uh, so I would say the instrument is about 95% uh, restored as far as the leather goes. We still do have some more projects, but they're able to be uh, done one at a time. Just a few years ago, we were able to retrieve the original Kimball Concert Grand Piano. Uh, that piano left the building sometime in the 1970s, uh, and we found it about an hour away uh, in a gentleman's garage, actually, uh, and we were able to bring that Kimball piano back home. It's not restored yet. It's, it's had a pretty rough life, but it is the original piano to this instrument, and it's the last remaining puzzle piece. So we're still trying to raise funds for the restoration of that Kimball piano. So it's really exciting to have that piano back in the building now, and hopefully one day it will be connected to the organ just like it was back in 1930 when the organ was built. Carl Hersom is the shop foreman here at the Boardwalk Hall. Uh, he and Jonathan Farnsley will take us through the two chambers of this amazing instrument. chambers right through this dressing room. We'll go there second, but this whole area is, these are original dressing rooms for the ballroom. Um, they're largely occupied by the Atlantic City Ballet now, which they're rehearsing every day, they're rehearsing right now. Let's see. Okay. So here's the left chamber for the Kimball. As you can see, we have organ pipes right in our face right when we walk in. So you definitely have to be, you know, limber to get around in here. So basically the two chambers, they're stacked in, th I guess you could say three levels if you count the floor um, as a level. Um, and each side has four main wind chests, two on the second, two on the third, um, and then offsets are littered throughout. Um, but mostly, I'd say on the, on the bottom floor is mostly mechanicals, uh, regulators, tremulants, stuff like that. So we've had about this nice little area here. Um, this hasn't always been here. Um, one of the few things that has been changed on the organ is just the location of the um, traps, percussion traps. Um, those used to live here, in this little open area here. Um, they were moved all the way up to the top of the chamber, and of all things, at least so I've been told, it happened before I started working here. Um, they even get out even better up there than they did kind of stuff down here. Um, so those were moved all the way up just so there was some room to work down here. Um, but as you can see, we still have um, melodic percussions um, down here, the vibra harp right here. Um, we also have the xylophone and uh, the glockenspiel there. Um, but yeah, you can see there's two wooden wind tr trunks going up either side um, from the two main regulators to feed the um, Two main chests above, and you can see that uh, the stuff over here is largely unified. There's a magnet for every single pipe. Um, chest over here is all straight um, on Pittman chests, um, which you see throughout, as discussed earlier, there's a combination of unit and um, straight stops in here. Um, okay, so we're on the second level of the left chamber. Um, and here you can see some of the color reads, color stops we have in here. Um, front here probably might be obvious to some theater people, the Kanura. Um, and then we also have here the uh, oboe horn right here, goes down to 16. Um, and then the English horn right here. A um, couple of the eight foot strings up here. 
um, all of the Celestes go down to eight foot, which we love to brag about. That's always fun. You know, there's no TCs here. And also right here, the inverted chimney one, we have the stopped flute. Something that I think is kind of a fun uh, visual um, that I don't think you can see in many organs aside from this one is to have a canura right next to a five rank mixture. Kind of in the same, <laughs> it's, you know, what, where else do you see that, you know? Um, that's a, typically a theater organ stop and on theater organs you don't really see mixtures. So um, I've always kind of liked that contrast here right, right next to each other. The main chest have largely been re-leathered. Um, there's been some pipe work um, restoration. Um, however, a lot of the uh, pipe work in here still needs to be cleaned and restored. It's basically been maintained for now. Um, and then through here to the second chest in here, uh, as we said earlier, here's the five, one of two mixtures in the organ, the five rank one here. Um, and then back through here, we have some more strings. There's strings all over in here. Um, also have the uh, muted diapason right here, which is kind of a fun, interesting tapered um, leathered lips. Um, I think that is the only leathered lip rank in this organ. I'm pretty sure. It is. Okay, so now we're on the third level, top level of the uh, left chamber. Um, and up here we have the one sole tibia in the whole organ. Some people complain about that. that there's not enough tibias in here when they really want to play for theatrical stuff. But um, I feel like he gets gets the job done here. So here's our one tibia. It goes down to 16 foot. Um, on the front is the upper extension of the diaphone. So the diaphone's at 16. Um, breaks over into uh, diapason pipes at F, 8 foot. 8 foot F and F sharp. Um, and I don't know if it was demonstrated earlier, but it's almost inaudible. Kimball did a wonderful job of transitioning from diaphone, an actual diaphone pipe into a diapason pipe. So the very front rank here, um, very assertive um, diapason unit. Um, wooden rent one right here, as you can see, it goes harmonic. We have the harmonic holes in here. This is the clarabella. Really pretty flute stop. Yet again, some more strings. There's even more on the chest over there. Um, this one is this one is just the viola. Yeah, viola and viola celeste. Um, and then to right, the right here, of course, we have our Vox Humana. Um, and it's cute little baby offset right there. There's a lot of top off octave uh, chests just littered about, attached wherever they could find it, a space to do it. So here are all those fun traps I talked about earlier down the first floor that used to live in that little space we were at earlier. Um, this, these were moved up here a decade or more ago um, before I was here. Um, I don't know how the heck they got the bass drum up here because um, it's, it's a tight squeeze to get up here. But um, I think this has been a great solution. Um, there's just open air space here. Um, they get right out into the room wonderfully, um, and honestly, at least for me, it's at eye level. So, <laughs> Also right here, you can see some of the, the bottom end of the 16-foot diaphone. Here are the resonators uh, for those. And then the chunky one right here is low C of the 16-foot tibia. Then over here, this is probably our dirtiest chest in the um, chamber still. Um, more or less, we've got original dirt. I don't think that's something to brag about, but necessarily, but um, yeah, as we've said, it's still a work in progress here. Um, here we've got four more ranks of strings. Um, there are two rank stops, so you turn on the one tab, turns on the parent and Celeste, they always come on together. Um, two sets of those at the front here. Um, you have the English diapason here, um, an octave, yes, an octave. Um, this is the 15-inch uh, um, trumpet unit goes down to 16 in this chamber. And then this wooden one right here is one of my favorite stops. Um, it's the mellophone. Um, I'm probably biased. I play the French horn and I marched mellophone, marching mellophone in high school. Um, really pretty stop. Um, can sound like a flute, 
play uh, playing as a solo or if you're playing in chords especially in like the tenor octave really does sound like um, a mellophone or a french horn it's a they're similar brass instruments um, nice inverted mouth upper lip here um, yeah that's probably one of my favorites here So now we're in the right chamber. Um, right when you come in on the back wall here, we have the 16 foot post horn, mm -hmm. um, the bottom octave of that. And then also the one uh, full length 32 foot, the bombard here, which is actually all metal despite what uh, Nick said earlier. Um, he was mistaking it. There's a lot of pipes in the in this building, you know, over 500 ranks, so it's hard to keep them all straight. But And I guess we can show you kind of what I was talking about earlier, um, about in the other chamber, about there is some unit stuff and there is some straight stuff on Pittman chests. Um, here, this chest right here, you can see, because there are a lot of blank sections of the chest, um, it's a Pittman chest. Um, that means it's straight, it's only available at one pitch, um, and you cannot play um, any two ranks on that chest independently of each other. Um, interestingly, that none of us has really been able to figure out quite yet is, of all things to put on a Pittman chest here, they did three of the color reeds. Um, one would think you'd want those to be independent, you know, for theatrical things. Um, but that's how it was built, that's how the senator designed it, and that's what we're living with. Um, front one there, bright pretty thing just recently got restored it's the brass trumpet um recently done by uh trivo uh, with much thanks to the american theater organ society for a grant to help uh, pay for that similar to the other side also there's a lot of mechanicals down on this first floor um we have the chimes a lot of regulators um, a couple of uh, traps um, but uh, most of the pipe work is on the second and third floor So we're on the second level of the uh, right stage chamber. Um, here are those reeds I was talking about earlier, um, the color reeds that are on a straight Pittman chest, the fun, pretty looking brass trumpet here, um, orchestral oboe, saxophone, fun, also fun looking resonators here, and the French horn closest to the grill there. Um, these all have been restored. These, these four ranks all have been restored um, within the other three ranks aside from the brass trumpet I think we're done maybe around 2012 at some point. Over into here, as some of you might be able to tell, this is definitely get into some of the more um, organ tone uh, classical voices. Um, here is where we have the other um, mixture, the seven rank mixture, um, and then and we also have a, a four foot and a two foot all on this uh, chest right here. The chest, you, as you can see, has recently been cleaned and finished. Um, pipe work has had some work done to it. Also, to my left here, um, these are this is the bottom end of the uh, one of the two 25-inch voices. The first one is the 32-foot bombard unit, which I pointed out earlier. Um, and then this is the 16-foot, uh, um, called a trombone down in the bottom octave. Um, and these are the wood resonators that Nick was talking about earlier. <clears throat> um, so now we're at the top top level of the uh, right chamber. Um, at the front here, we have the top end of the 16-foot post horn. Uh, in between here, we got two ranks of cellos, even more strings. Um, and then the two back here are the uh, top end of the two 25-inch um, reads in the organ here is the upper end of the 32 foot bombard. This is the end, upper end of the 16 foot trombone and on the um, Bombard manual manual number four. They're both referred to there's um, tuba and tuba miraculous And here's the final chest um, We're visiting in the organ today uh, Still at the top level of the right chamber. So we have the clarinet here um, Everything in front of that is a lot more 
organ tone. Um, straight stops. On the front there is the eight foot of the four and two that we saw downstairs with the seven rank mixture. Um, the eight foot major diapason. We have another diapason right here. Um, and then also up here, it's probably the two uh, quietest stops on the organ, the flute and flute celeste. Um, so we have the parent right here and then the celeste up at the front there. Um, also, interestingly, only available on uh, manual four, on the Bombard manual. Also behind us, you can kind of just get a fun little view of the top of the 225 inch, the uh, ranks the 16 foot trombone and the 32 foot bombard. People have seen these and kind of ask what these wooden paddle like things are on the top of the um, bombard, but it's just for, they affect tuning a bit, but a lot of it's for regulation. We feature this instrument throughout the year uh, in our weekly and daily recital series uh, from uh, during the summer from Memorial Day through Labor Day. We have a daily recital series Monday through Friday and we try to feature this instrument as much as possible in addition to the mid merlage instrument. Sometimes uh, the main arena is in use so it's nice to be able to come over here and, and still be able to, to have a recital and not have to turn people away. Uh, we also use this instrument for silent films throughout the year. Uh, so there are a host of, of different areas and times where people can come and hear this instrument. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so we rely on donations, we rely on grants uh, for the restoration of both of these instruments. Uh, you can find out more about that on our website, on our social media, on Facebook, and on uh, Instagram. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Kimball organ here at Boardwalk Hall. Someday we'll be back to hear the mid and it's all in its complete glory, but that'll be a few days and we want to spend a few days here doing it. For now, I hope you've enjoyed this brief look. If you did, please give us a thumbs up down in the description below. There's a link to the specification of the organ as well as a link to the Historic Organ Restoration Committee's website and all the information you could ever want to know about the concerts here at Boardwalk Hall. All of that can be found down in the description. For now, I'd like to offer my thanks to Nick Myers, Carl Hersom, Jonathan Farnsley, and to Nathan Bryson for uh, helping us make this trip possible. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We have more videos coming out soon. But until those videos are out, remember you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Thank you for watching from Atlantic City. I'm Brent Johnson.